So this is a presentation on scaphoid fractures. So in overview, uh, so scaphoid fracture overview, the scaphoid is the most common carpal bone fracture, accounting for almost 75% of all um, carpal fractures. The usual mechanism is a fall on the hand with wrist extended, and the injury is rare in children and in the elderly. Uh, the blood supply of the scaphoid diminishes proximally, and this accounts for the fact that 1% of distal third fractures, 20% of middle third fractures, and 40% of proximal fractures result in non-union and avascular necrosis of the proximal fragment. So a quick anatomy overview of the wrist. So the wrist is composed of eight carpal bones, the radiocarpal joint, the distal parts of the bones of the forearm, including the distal radio ulnar joint, and the proximal parts of the five metacarpal bones and the joints between those bones. The carpal bones are the scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, and pisiform in the proximal row, and the trapezoid the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate in the distal row. Um, these bones are stabilised by the intrinsic ligaments attached only to the carpal bones, including the scaphoid-lunate ligament, the lunotriquetral ligament, and the TFCC, or the triangular fibrocartilage complex. Uh, the extrinsic ligaments also attach to bones other than the carpal bones. On the dorsum of the wrist, these include the dorsal intercarpal, the dorsal radio triquetral, and the dorsal radio ulnar ligaments. And on the volar wrist, these include, I won't read them all. Um, so the carpometacarpal joints are five joints that articulate the distal row of carpal bones and the proximal base of the five metacarpal bones. And the distal radio ulnar joint is a pivot joint formed between the ulnar head and the ulnar notch of the distal radius. Okay, so on history, um, thinking about a scaphoid fracture. So scaphoid injuries result from either a fall on an outstretched hand, outstretched dorsiflexed hand, or from an axial, loading, uh, axial load directed along the thumb's metacarpal. And uh, there is pain along the radial aspect of the wrist. So on history, those are the things you might pick up. Um, on examination, the localised tenderness in the anatomic snuff box is one of the signs. So snuff box tenderness demonstrates a sensitivity and specificity for scaphoid fracture of 90% and 40% respectively. Um, tubercle tenderness demonstrates a sensitivity and specificity of 87 and 57% respectively. And several findings together can be combined to indicate um, the scaphoid fracture. So uh, the anatomic snuff box tenderness, scaphoid tubercle tenderness, tenderness with longitudinal compression of the thumb on the scaphoid and pain with acute thumb movement. Uh, as a recap, the borders of the uh, anatomical snuff box are the extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, abdu and abductor pollicis longus. Um, and through the snuff box, we've got the radial artery and overlying it, the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Imaging. So uh, x-ray should offer anteroposterior posterior uh, lateral and two oblique views, but even then the fracture may not be seen in the first few days after the injury. Um, two weeks later, the break is usually much clearer due to bone uh, resorption at the fracture site and slight displacement of fragments. The crack uh, is usually transverse through the narrowest part of the bone, um, also known as the waist, but it may be more proximal or more distal. You always want to look for signs of associated carpal displacement as well. CT scan is more sensitive for diagnosing a scaphoid fracture and it's particularly useful in confirming the alignment of the bone fragments if surgery is planned, or to confirm whether the fracture is united or not. And then MRI is a, de is a definitive way to confirm or exclude a diagnosis of scaphoid fracture if the technique is available. So initial management of a scaphoid fracture. So if the x-ray is looking normal, but the clinical features um, from the history and examination are suggestive of a fracture, um, don't discharge the patient as you need to confirm it one way or another. Usual advice is to return for a second x-ray two weeks later after a scaphoid plaster is applied. Um, an, alt uh, an alternative is to arrange an MRI, or if not available, a CT scan, as it's better able to detect the fracture even if um, it was not visible in the x-ray. Uh, so the scaphoid plaster, uh, in this the wrist is immobilised in a cast extending from the upper forearm to just short of the metacarpophalangeal joints of the fingers. Um, but incorporating the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Um, and the wrist is held dorsiflex and the thumb forward in the glass um, holding position. Uh, if a fracture is confirmed, treatment will depend on the type of fracture and the degree of displacement. Uh, a scaphoid fracture is considered unstable if it is oblique. There is as little as one millimetre of displacement. There is rotational comminution, 
Well, there is a carpal instability pattern that is present. Um, instable and non-displaced fractures, cast mobilisation is recommended. Um, an inclusion of the thumb for immobilisation is not necessary for non-displaced waist fractures. In unstable and displaced fractures, surgical treatment um, with open reduction internal fixation with a compression screw is required. And closed reduction and percutaneous fixation with compression screw is an alternate method in cases without gross displacement. Um, after eight, in a non-displaced fracture of the waist with a plaster applied, after eight weeks the plaster is removed and the wrist examined clinically and radiologically. If there's no tenderness and the x-ray shows that the fracture is fully healed, the, lift, the wrist is left free. If there is doubt, a CT scan should be used to confirm whether it has indeed healed. Uh, if the scaphoid is tender or the fracture is still visible on x-ray, when non-operative treatment is chosen, the cast is reapplied and retained for a further six weeks. And then if at that stage there are signs of delayed, delayed union, such as bone resorption and cavitation around the fracture, healing can be hastened by bone grafting um, and internal fixation. So some of the complications of scaphoid fractures. Um, so two thirds of the scaphoid surface is articular and this only adds to the scaphoid's problems because articular fractures are more difficult to heal. Uh, the main complications of improperly healed scaphoid fractures are avascular necrosis, delayed union, non-union, malunion and the subsequent early degenerative arthritis. Um, so with non-union, so by two to three months it may be obvious that the fracture will not unite and if so bone grafting um, should be considered. The aim is to reduce the pain from the non-union and to reduce the chance of secondary osteoarthritis. Uh, the bone graft on a vascular um, pedicle um, can be taken from the back of the distal radius. Uh, once a fracture of the waist fails to heal, it starts to collapse into um, a humpback uh, deformity and a wedge of bone taken from the iliac crest can be carved into shape and placed in the non-union to restore the proper shape and encourage healing. Um, with avascular necrosis, so a, a scaphoid fracture can develop avascular necrosis of the proximal uh, fracture segment that can lead to disabling arthritis. And as the, as the vascular supply to the scaphoid enters the distal portion of the bone through small branches off the radial artery and palmar and superficial arteries, a fracture can um, easily disrupt the blood supply to the proximal segment. And the more proximal, oblique or displaced the fracture, the greater the risk of developing avascular necrosis. So up to 80% of proximal fractures result in necrosis. Uh, X-ray examination at two to three months may show increased density of the proximal fragment, a pathognomic sign for avascular necrosis. Uh, although spontaneous revascularization and union are possible, they take years and meanwhile the wrist collapses and arthritis develops. Um, vascular vascularized bone grafting may be successful, um, but if the wrist becomes painful, the dead fragment can be excised, but the wrist tends to collapse after this procedure. Um, a better option is to remove the entire proximal row couple bones or else to remove the scaphoid and fuse the proximal to the distal row. Um, so non-union and avascular necrosis may lead to secondary arthritis of the wrist and if the arthritis is confined to the distal pole, excising the radial styloid may help, um, but once degenerative arthritis is evident at the radiocarpal joint, salvage procedures include proximal row carpectomy, scaphoid excision and mid-carpal arthrodesis and or total um, wrist arthrodesis. So in conclusion, carpal bone fractions are the most commonly missed wrist injuries. Um, so careful assessment is critical to recognise um, them early, um, to treat them in order to prevent complications. Thank you.